remain confused about the exact meaning and implication of the term riba so when we have to compare trading with riba uh, we need to keep this fact in mind that riba is basically uh, an attributive term and uh, throughout in the glorious quran whenever the term riba is used it is used as an attribute for example in re- uh, relation to uh, trading uh, verse 275 of chapter 2 of glorious quran reads those that live on riba shall rise before god like men whom satan has demented by his touch for they claim that riba is like trading but god has permitted trading and forbidden riba now this verse provides the relationship between trading and riba the last phrase but god has permitted trading and forbidden riba basically provides the exact context of this verse the word riba over here is used as a proviso for example uh, when you advise somebody that okay you are allowed to do a business provided it is a legitimate business so your intention is that you are advising the other party that okay you may do or conduct a business but it must be lawful business similarly over here the god command that trading is permitted provided it is free from riba so riba is used over here as a proviso or as a warning now what is riba riba is something excess or abnormality so in the context of trading this would imply excess or abnormal profits unfortunately the conventional uh, muslim scholars have taken a very lopsided uh, approach when they are going to interpret this part of uh, this uh, verse of the glorious quran and they relate riba to interest that is technically speaking an economic concept and even its arabic equivalent is faida and not riba anyway we move forward so this fact is uh, further reinforced uh, in another uh, beautiful verse of the glorious quran in the following words this is verse 29 of chapter 4 it reads you who believe do not wrongfully consume each other's wealth but trade by mutual consent so it means in this verse the glorious quran again commands mankind that uh, we must desist from resorting to unfair trade practices rather the trade must be conducted with mutual consent that is mutual consent between the buyer and the seller and of course when mutual consent is there it means the possibility of acquiring each other's wealth through unfair means is excluded or it is at least minimized for example uh when we i mean uh, talk about mutual consent so it means if you are a seller you must ensure that whatever product or service you are selling it is free from defects and if it has any defects they must be brought to the notice of the buyer that is there should be no element of cheating in it and second thing is that the price you charge for that product or service it should have a reasonable correlation with its cost of production similarly if you are a buyer then of course you should not offer to unfair uh, practices like making payment uh, through a void check or some fake currency and so on and so on so basically uh, whether you are a buyer or a seller fair trading should be present if you want to avoid riba but broadly speaking since uh in majority of the cases the merchant or the trader is in a dominant position to uh, influence uh individual buyers so that is why the practice of riba uh may be, or the likelihood of uh, practice of riba is higher in case of a trader than in case of a buyer a related question may be what is fair trading well There are three important elements of fair trading that one must keep in mind. First element is called 
at arm's length transaction. Now, what is an arm's length transaction? In this case, both the parties, that is the buyer and the seller, are considered to be independent of each other. So it means each party is trying to look after its personal interest. The buyer's intention is to buy a merchandise that is suitable for him and for which he is willing to pay a price. Similarly, the seller is trying to sell a product at a price that is going to offer him reasonable profits. So the first element of fair trading is that it should be done at arm's length principle. Now, second element is called free consent. Normally, it is assumed that free consent may be absent if the consent of one of the parties to a contract is obtained either through coercion, undue influence, fraud, or misrepresentation. For example, in the case of trading, if the buyer is making a misrepresentation about the merchandise that he or she intends to sell, then in this case, the buyer under that the influence of that misrepresentation is going to offer his consent to purchase that merchandise. But technically speaking, this would be unfair practice because the buyer is not provided with exact and accurate information about the product and the seller has resorted to misrepresentation. Now, third element is fair consideration. Consideration is basically something in return. So when somebody enters into an agreement, for example, when you go to the market and you intend to buy something, your consideration is that particular merchandise or the product that you intend to purchase. Whereas on the part of the seller, the consideration is the price of the product. So it means you are going to get your consideration in the form of the merchandise that you purchase. Whereas the seller is going to get the consideration in the form of the price of the product or the merchandise. So if these three elements are present in any trading relationship, then generally it is assumed that this is an example of fair trading. And this is also permissible in the light of relevant verses of the glorious Quran. So far, we have understood the concept that the glorious Quran categorically prohibits practice of riba in trading and of course when somebody is practicing riba in trading their intention is to charge exorbitant prices to make abnormal or excess profits and by resorting to this mean the trader is unfairly acquiring the wealth of the buyer so this is strictly prohibited now a question may arise that what should be the size of permissible profit? So what are the circumstances from where we can uh, infer whether the profits earned by the trader are within the permissible limits or they are abnormal or excessive? Well, this is a technical issue and we need to analyze uh, I mean, this specific uh, question in the light of various economic and trading situations. The first situation is classification of goods and services. We know that goods may be classified uh, as normal goods or snob appeal goods. What are normal goods that may be consumed by uh, majority of the buyers in day to day life? For example, uh, uh, basic commodities uh, that uh, everybody is interested to buy. This may include your grocery item, this may include your normal uh, clothing items, household items, and so on and so on. The law of economics tells us that in a fair competitive market condition, the prices of normal goods uh, are always competitive and there is a, a little chance for the seller to earn abnormal or excess profits. Where in case of snob appeal goods these are the goods that are acquired for ostentation purposes so for example limousines expensive uh, clothing perfumes diamonds and so on and so on in this case it is generally observed that the price that is charged by the seller is always exorbitant it's very high price and there are abnormal profits because the seller is exploiting 
the unique instinct of the buyer those who want to uh, show off their wealth by resorting to buying excessive uh, rather commodities at very high prices now in this case the element of riba may be present both on the part of the buyer and the seller because this practice is not considered lawful this is not considered fair on the part of the seller he is trying to sell something at a very high price and the, there is no uh, i mean uh, correlation between the price that is charged for the product and its cost of production on the contrary on the part of the buyer the good is merely acquired to show off that money could have been spent for other i mean more uh, uh, acceptable uh, objectives like for example feeding a poor person or helping a poor person and so on and so on so in case of snob appeal goods the element of riba will always be present while in case of normal goods the element of riba may be absent if it is done under competitive environment the second situation may relate to social trends and consumer preferences we know that when there is high demand for a product probably because uh, majority of the people uh, are following each other to buy that product or that product may be offering certain unique features it's a new model new brand something like that so the seller is in a position to charge a high price for that product and in this case of course again there is no relationship between the price that is being charged and of course the cost of production the uh, the seller is only exploiting the whims and the instinct of the consumers so definitely Uh, then he is practicing riba because he is exploiting some weakness of the buyer to amass wealth to acquire wealth of the buyer through his unfair practice and what is this unfair practice that is the price that is being charged for such goods or services has no bearing or relationship with its cost of production and in a situation that may be relevant to uh, i mean uh, look into whether riba is present or not is the market structure of forms of market uh, students of economics know that there there could be several market structures like monopoly oligopoly duopoly imperfect competition perfect competition and so on and so on but primarily over here we'll just look into monopoly and perfect competition in the monopoly situation because as as, as the word uh, denotes there is only one seller in the market and by virtue of that fact the seller is in a position to charge a very high price because the consumers have no alternative they have no choice available so that is why monopolies are generally uh, considered harmful for the society and for the economy and there is an other another uh, technical element uh, rather a technical uh, drawback uh, with monopolies that whenever there is a monopoly situation there will be allocative and technical inefficiencies in the market so it means uh, because of these allocative and technical inefficiencies the whole market the whole economy is going to suffer and it is only the monopolist who is going to amass wealth because of uh, these uh, inefficiencies and he is also wasting uh, the four factors of production or the resources because they are not being consumed uh, in an efficient manner and they have not been allocated towards the production of those goods and services that should be provided to the society rather the goods and services are produced to lure and entice certain segment of the people to earn super nominal profits on the contrary if there is perfect competition large number of of course uh, sellers in the market then of course they can only charge a competitive price and the probability of earning abnormal profits uh, will be uh, absent another uh, related issue may be uh, marketing technique employed by the uh, seller we know that there could be two types of marketing technique that are normally used in our day to day life one is called the persuasive market marketing technique and the other is called informative marketing technique now what happens in case of persuasive marketing technique the seller is trying to persuade the potential consumer or the buyer through uh, uh, persuasion he is not providing exact information about the product rather he is enticing the buyer for example um, 
we see several ads where uh, harmful products like for example liquor or um, uh, even uh, tobacco and other related products are uh, I mean galvanized in a manner by showing young ladies etc etc so that young people are lured towards those products similarly uh, somebody is selling for example uh, a vehicle and instead of uh, highlighting the uh, basic features of that uh, vehicle he is glamorizing uh, I mean the ad so that people may be lured towards that product so this is or uh, these are the examples of persuasive marketing and when there is persuasive marketing it means there's an element of misrepresentation and of course the seller is in a position to charge a higher price or to sell a product that may not be demanded by the buyers under normal circumstances or contrary if there is um, informative marketing technique then it it only focuses on the specific uh, or the specifications of the product so that the buyer can make a rational and an informed decision rather than a biased decision based on uh, enticement or persuasion so in case of persuasive marketing technique the presence of riba uh, may be there on the contrary in case of uh, informative marketing technique the presence of riba may not be present Another related situation may be the pricing strategy adopted by the seller. Now there could be two uh, extreme pricing strategies that I'm going to uh, explain here. One is called the penetration pricing and other is called price skimming. In case of penetration pricing, what happens is that the seller is trying to sell his product at a very low price, whether we his or her competitors so he wants to penetrate the whole market so in this case of course the possibility of abnormal profits is not there so it's only normal profits that can be earned through penetration pricing uh, strategy now what is price skimming in case of price skimming the seller tries to sell product at a very high price uh, he wants to lower uh, the trend setters in the market and in this case of course uh, since the price is very high, the existence of abnormal profits is definitely present in case of price skim uh, skimming uh, strategy adopted by the seller. So the possibility of riba is present in case of price skimming strategy, while in case of market penetration, the probability of uh, riba may not be there. I may conclude this monologue with the, the phrase that the relationship between trading and riba has multiple dimensions. And of course, as believers, when we uh, adopt trading as a profession, we must keep this fact in mind that abnormal profits or uh, the greed for abnormal profits will ultimately lead us towards practice of riba. And of course, then uh, this is something that we must try to avoid under all circumstances. Thank you for watching.